I'm CK with Under Pressure Power Performance, and today we're going to show you how to install one of our Subaru WRX rotated mount turbo kits. Now this fits on the 02 to 07 WRX and WRX STI. Uh, it's a very straightforward install on this, so we're going to skip over a lot of parts because most of it's just, you know, pulling off the old turbo, putting the new turbo on. So instead of going step by step, we're going to make a fairly short video today, and we're just going to highlight the, uh, the small changes in it. Okay, here we can see the support bracket orientation for our up pipe. Now what you're going to do is install one of the bolts from the bottom and actually turn it into a stud so that way when the turbo sits down in here you put a nut on from the top. The bracket is going to go on the bottom side of that. So you're actually going to set the, uh, the bolt through the bracket and then screw it into the, uh, the flange of the up pipe here. And then right over here on the transmission. And you can see with our flex pipe that we've got in there, it's got a little bit of flexion and uh, movability so you can, you can wiggle it around and, and get it uh, seated as you need it. And then you'll be able to swing everything around. And we did that so that way you can get a little bit better fitment on it. You can kind of position it around and, and move it a little bit. But this bracket here is going to bolt right in to the transmission here, which is going to help, help support it and take some of the weight and the stress off of the up pipe itself. Okay. Now you can see our kit's installed in here, and the turbo, as all rotated mounts, is cocked slightly towards the passenger side of the car. Um, the cold air intake is going to be right on here, um, and we'll start with a 45-degree coupler. Now, the two legs of the 45-degree coupler, when you guys get them, are going to be the same size. Now, the side that goes towards the turbo is going to need to be cut down. We, now, we've left this up to you guys, because that way it kind of gives you a little bit more adjustability room as far as if it needs to be shifted forward or backwards and that sort of thing. But it's pretty much the general layout of it here. We've got our wastegate mounted right back here on the side. We'll show you that in a minute. The downpipe and the intake here. Now with the intake pipe, it's also with the uh, TO4B SH turbos, which is the slightly smaller turbos, you have your option of a 2.75 or a 3 inch intake on it, um, depending on how much power you're trying to go out of it. The larger the intake will give you better top flow on the overall and the, on the high end, but it'll limit the uh, resolution that the mass air meter has on the small end, meaning idle and light throttle drivability. So the smaller one will give you a little bit better light throttle and drivability, whereas the top one is going to flow more. For the GT35R guys, which is our 6182 turbo, um, you have the option again of the 3 inch, or we can bump it up to the 3.5 inch so we can make complete use of room of the head flow on the mass air meter here. Okay, now you can see we've removed the intake so we can get a little bit better look at the uh, intercooler piping and the layout on it. Um, now it is good to note right now that the intercooler needs to be a front mount intercooler. That's kind of how this is designed to be worked with. Um, and it's designed to work with an intercooler where the piping from the turbo comes from the passenger side and then the piping from the throttle body, or to the throttle body rather, comes from the driver's side over here. Um, I believe AMS has their setup like that, Greddy does, and of course we have our own uh, front mount intercooler kit that is set up like this and this kit is designed to work with. So what we're going to do is the original piping that was here with the front mount, we're going to go ahead and take that off. Um, then we're going to clock the turbo at a 45 degree downward angle. You can kind of see it right there, pointing toward the passenger side. Right off of that, we're going to come out with a 90 degree silicone bend into our 45 degree uh, aluminum pipe. And the longer section of the aluminum pipe is on the turbo side. Then a 90 degree bend right here into the fender well, which is going to connect up with the front mount intercooler kit. Okay, next up for the oil line connection, um, the WRX is you guys are going to get the banjo fitting um, that looks like this here. Basically, you're just going to unbolt the factory oil line on the back side of the passenger head here. This is going to bolt in right in its place um, using the factory bolt that came with it. So this is just slide light through like that. Now, for you STI guys, you guys are going to get a little bit different fitting. Um, yours will actually adapt to the... Um, the banjo, the alpha banjo coming off of yours because it extends and goes somewhere else. Um, you'll have a little flare fitting. You guys will have the adapter for the flare fitting, which this line will screw right onto. Um, so basically that's going to sit down there and there like that. The oil line here is going to go and made right up to the top of the turbo with the 135 degree bend, which is going to send it right down there. Now for the oil return, it's pretty easy. It comes with the flange on the, uh, the bottom of the bolt, or I mean on the bottom of the turbo there. Um, just bolt up the drain flange and then we provided the replacement rubber hose that'll go actually between it. Now the rubber hose you might have to cut to length. Um, we may usually make it a little bit too long that way. You got some room to work with when you actually go to install it, make it a little bit easier. Okay, next we're going to look at some changes in the cooling system. Um, predominantly is going to be this bracket right here. 
Now, this usually bolts up right here. Um, this is your coolant reservoir. What we've done is we've included a bracket with a kit. It's gonna extend it, this out, swing it a little bit further away. That's gonna give enough room in here for our intake to come through. Um, in accordance with that, this hose going down into the head here between the uh, intake manifold runners uh, is gonna need to be extended, so we've included that with the kit. So that'll basically just replace the one that's there and it goes directly to where it uh, originally did before. Um, these two lines, they're plenty long enough, they're just gonna swing out of the way so that way they sit below our intake as it comes across. Um, the third one here is what goes to your turbo. Now, for the 35-hour guys with the 6182, um, it has the, the cooling ports as part of it. Um, so we've included the banjo. So on this side here, you're gonna want the banjo facing up. Let's see if I can get a close-up of that real quick. Right there. Um, and the one on this side here, on the passenger side, is gonna be shorter uh, of the two banjos. And like I said, it'll face directly up. That's gonna come and plug right into our coolant reservoir where the existing one did previously. Um, for the other one, that actually comes from down below on the block there. That's gonna come up and it used to go to the turbo as well. Um, there's a banjo on this side here, and we're just gonna shoot it straight down, and that's gonna connect right up with the factory line. So the factory line will just get reused for the bottom section. For the upper one here, we're gonna go ahead and include this with the kit, um, and this will replace the one so it goes right to the banjo. Now, for those of you guys that are running the uh, T04B SH trim, which is this little smaller one, um, it doesn't have, it's a, not a water-cooled turbo, so we're gonna bypass the coolant on it directly. So basically, you're gonna go from right here, and we've included the barb fitting. This will plug in directly to the coolant on the bottom side um, where it's coming from the block. So you're basically just gonna connect the two hoses together with it. All right, now here you can get a little bit better close up of the banjo. This is on the driver's side. And then we'll come around here real quick and we'll show you the passenger side one. You see the passenger side one's just facing directly up. The driver's side one is facing directly down. Okay, next thing we're gonna get into is gonna be the power steering here. Now this is the factory location for the power steering reservoir, um, and you can unclip it from the bracket um, and move it out of the way, and then you'll see that the bracket was actually bolted in right here and here. Um, that's the factory bracket. Now all we're gonna do is we've relocated it over here, and you can see this is the bracket. Um, you're reusing one of the existing bolts that's actually holding in the ABS. So we took that bolt out, we took the bracket out, um, this hole here on the bracket, let's make a better shot of it there. This hole here on the bracket, you're going to need to drill out and enlarge it so that way this bolt will fit through it. Uh, the other ones are only 6 millimeter bolts. This one's the 8 mil, so it's got to be a little bit bigger. So just drill the hole out, enlarge it. Then we're going to remove the, back, the bolt right here for the uh, ABS unit. Slide the bracket underneath it and put the bolt back in. And now our power steering reservoir will just be relocated. So all we did is we slid it back about six inches here. You can kind of see. And then we relocated essentially from here to here. And that's it. The lines you shouldn't need to do anything with. You don't even have to disconnect them. Um, they're plenty long enough of that and they'll just slide back. That's gonna give us enough room for our intake to come through here and be able to have our filter housing in there. Okay, now wastegate's pretty simple setup. Um, basically you'll see the wastegate tube coming off of it. Just bolt it up just like you normally would with the fire ring. Um, the wastegate itself will face towards the back because our dump tube is going to come off the back side there, go into the car, um, and then ex exit out the back. Um, got the V-band adapter here with the V-band and then right to our downpipe. Our downpipe is just going to bolt up. It's like a normal downpipe. Uh, for the T04B guys, you guys will have a different adapter here. Um, it'll be the 5-bolt flange adapter to, still to the same 3-inch downpipe um, and the 3-inch V-band. So it'll be a V-band connection up there. Like I said, the install on this is pretty much straightforward, so there's not a whole lot to get into in depth on it. We just kind of want to give you guys uh, a layout and kind of the orientation of where everything goes. So it's a little bit easier for you to install. All right, one last time, we'll go ahead and give you a look of the whole system here and try and get a view from all sides and all around. Now, again, this is with the uh, 35R on it, and we also have the option of the T04B SH. Well, that about finishes our install today on the Subaru kit here. 
I'm CK with Under Pressure Power and Performance. And remember, stay tuned.